Hi, I'm Heath Seawold, a SourceForge engineer. Today I'm going to walk you through the steps of uh, forking a project and submitting a merge request. I'm also going to show you what it looks like to receive that merge request and how to apply the merge. So here's an example of a demo repo. This is the project that we want to make contributions to. And we can also assume that we don't have permissions to commit to this project. Now we could actually clone from this repo and pull it down. The issue is when we make the changes and want to commit back up to the, the demo repo, we don't have permission, right? So that's where the forked repo comes into play. So with the forked repo, it's just a clone of the demo repo that we're going to have permission to. Now we can clone locally from our forked version and have the ability to commit and push back to the fork. And it's from that fork that we do our merge request. By default, if new commits are made to the demo repo, they will not be merged into the fork repo automatically. So in order to keep our fork updated with the latest commits, we can add the demo repo as a remote to our local repo. This allows us to pull commits from the demo repo and merge them locally. From there, we can push back up to our fork repo. Now that we have a basic idea of how this all works conceptually, let's go ahead and walk through how we actually do it. Okay, so I'm here on SourceForge and I'm in the demo repository. Uh, you can see actually here that it says read access only and that indicates that uh, this is not my project or I do not have permissions to write to this project. So like we discussed before, I wanna go ahead and fork this. Over here you see the fork button, I'm gonna click on that. Uh, we have a few options here. So for project, I can either associate this with a project that I already created or I can associate it with my user account. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And mount point just refers to the named URL. So say, say forked repo and hit fork. Uh, this status will be updated as soon as it's finished and all this stuff goes away here. I'm gonna go ahead and click here to refresh. Okay, now it looks just like the other one did, only we have read write access. So let's go ahead and clone this locally. Okay, so now we're just going to clone this locally from our forked repo. We'll go ahead and cd into that directory. Now we can just add a, a readme file. And make sure we add that file to git, commit it, and then push it back. Okay, back to SourceForge. So back on SourceForge, you can see that uh, this has updated on our fork. This is a pretty huge improvement, so let's go ahead and uh, do a merge request. Click right here on merge request, and we have a few options. So I generally match the summary to my commit message. The source branch refers to our fork branch, which we were on master when we pushed it, so we'll leave that. And we're gonna go ahead and target master. Description is optional, I'm gonna leave that blank. I hit save here. So now you can see that there's a merge request this is the status. Uh, if we click on it, we can't actually merge it because it's not our project. But let me show you what that looks like on the other end. So I've just logged into the account that owns this repo. You can see there's read write access to the repo. So I'm gonna click here on merge requests and now I'm gonna click on open. This is what a merge request looks like from the point of view of the person that owns the project. So the first thing you may notice is this merge button. This merge button is a relatively new feature at SourceForge and it basically just checks to make sure that there's no conflicts with this merge. But before I hit the merge button, uh, I wanna go ahead and take a look at the differences. Let's go ahead and just click on this commit. So this was a fairly good change, right? So I'm gonna hit the merge button. And now if we click back on master branch, you can see that the merge was successful and everything is displayed as expected. 